Hi, it's Ben from Visual Dev FM, back with another video on the upvote system. And I just wanted to show you a new addition. So you can see here on my products page, I've listed the products and you can still vote, but you can see this uh, new uh, thing that should appear, which is, um, it says I voted for something. And there's no user login system with Webflow yet. So how, how do we accomplish this? You know, you can see I can still vote for an item and the page refreshes. It adds the vote. Oh, and you can see it marks this as voted. How is this happening? What What's going on? Um, so I'm using JavaScript and some local storage to make this happen. So um, if you open up the console, you'll notice that I have two items that are showing up here. Uh, and if I go to application and to local storage, you can see they're set here as well. So what I've done is I've gone into my collection and I've essentially added in another field and I've called it short code. Um, and then what I've done is for every item, I've put in one word. It's kind of like a variable that I'm gonna use for this. And so it can work dynamically. So the structure of how this works is I, this is still built the same way, but inside the, the form block, I have two elements. I've made the form block relative and I have the form itself, which I'm going to go into. And then I have the voted. So this has a higher Z index. So it shows up when you vote, we're going to set an item in local storage that will make this be hidden. And so then you'll see what's behind, which is a message that says you've voted. Um, so in this, if you open this up, you'll see I've got a div and I've just given it the ID of my, I'm passing my short code, my variable through here saying, this is the idea of the div. And then what I've done is I've taken the form and even, I've still got the inputs for the name and the item ID, but I've even uh, taken the submit button and hard coded it in. And what I've done is I've given it uh, a, a, on the on click function. So on click equals, you know, my vote. And then I'm passing the short code through as an argument inside these single quotes here. And then um, when you vote, we have some JavaScript that runs from the page settings. So if I go into the page settings and I scroll down to the before body, I've got two things happening. One, I've got my function, my vote, and this short code argument. And basically I'm saying on submit form, which we've done before where we reload the page, but I've added in one piece where local storage, I'm setting the item of the short code to true. So send the item of my variable to true in here. And I could have just set the short code itself, but I, I set the name of the key and the value um, in case I want to do something with this later, fancier. Um, and then below that, I have a script that runs on page load. So I've basically got a variable and it's undefined and I am looping through all of the items in local storage and I'm setting them in the, uh, in the array. So if, if I, once again, if I've in the future, I've got some plans, some things I might want to do, but I'm also saying get the element ID by, by getting the ID from what's in local storage. And if it's in local storage, set the display to none. It's like selecting an item and setting it to display, display none. So if you remember that ID is that short code here, I'm using it and then I'm looping through with JavaScript, looping through all of those variables and setting the display to none. So here you can see two of them and I can go up and down this page and I can vote for things. Um, and then, you know, it's going to submit my vote refresh, but then it's going to show that I have voted. So a user could, could, you know, I think we, we talked about this on this week's po podcast, a user could still game the system. I mean, you could come into your application and you could delete these values. And once you delete it and reload the page, they're back there again. But someone's going to have to have a pretty intricate knowledge of just how the web works. And I, you know, like we talked about in the episode, I think people who are determined to socially hack something and get a lot of votes in, they're going to find a way, even if it's opening up accounts under 15 different emails or getting friends to organize to vote. Um, you know, that's always going to happen. And, you know, if you definitely need logger user login systems, um, you can always look at a different uh, tool or uh, that might that might fit that a little bit better. But just so you know, wanted to show you how you can do this. I will put um, uh, the preview link for the site in the video description. I'll also include a link to where you can get this code that I'm using. 
in the description so that way if you wanted to use it you absolutely could on your project so for those of you who asked you know how does this work this is how it works hope this helps if you have any other questions don't hesitate to reach out and i'll do my best to help you thanks